Uh, we were going probably 35 miles an hour for the majority of the morning and once we got out of the rain we managed to get all the way up to uh, 62 miles an hour on the highway. That's a big difference. I bet you were really glad about that. Yeah. Overall, honestly, for me, the best thing was the closed track race. Getting third place in that is something we haven't done in a very long time. Uh, yes, there are two classes of race in this uh, American Solar Challenge thread. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the first one is the closed track race, and that was in Monticello, New York, at the Monticello Motor Club. And then the second one is this cross-country race that we just finished, and that goes from Rochester, New York, to St. Paul, Minnesota. So, also known, the first part is actually the Formula Sun Grand Prix, and then the second part will be the American Solar Challenge. All right. So, first of all, I just wanted to say it was a great day of racing. Rohan. Uh, yeah, my name is Rohan, by the way. And it was it was raining a lot in the morning, and what happened was that I think our car hydroplane, and it. We lost traction and we spun out a bit onto the side, but other than that, the car was fine. I managed to keep it under control as it went under the grass and we did our checks the moment it was done and the car got back onto the road and we got here as fast as possible. You've never had a good experience before, right? No, I, it was, uh, my heart did skip a beat for a bit and I was unsure whether to keep driving or not, but I mean, I had to make sure that we won today and get the car back to Minnesota on time, I mean, to St. Paul on time. So I did what I had to drive here and I mean, I think we did a pretty good job of it. Did you know what, what you? Uh... Yeah, so I have I have I've been trained uh, in situations like this. We had undergone training. So what I did was I figured out where I tried to find where I lost traction, and then I tried to counterattack the spin and brake after I landed on the grass, so I don't start flipping and rolling on the road. Because if I'd done that, the car would have been split into two pieces and. That would be the end of the race for us. If, and the thing is, we worked really hard to build up a really strong lead for this race. And I think that because the car was safe, we were able to get here and still win the yeah, SC. Very good. Yep. Uh, what happened to your wrist? Oh. I actually fell off a bike two days of before ESC. Okay. I got a slight sprain, but I'm all good. I could, I was clear to drive medically, so I'm all good. Uh, yep. Well, here is uh, our big applause for yep. uh, Rohan. The, uh, <laughs> Very so calm and cool driver yep. here at University of Michigan at American Solar Challenge 2012. Thank you very much. The camaraderie of the team and uh, making it through a uh, bunch of difficult, you know, situations and and things along the race route and uh, working together and learning to properly manage uh, people and time and uh, just it, the overall experience of driving the solar car on the road, promoting renewables, and it's just a lot of fun overall. I'm Sarah Knoll and I'd have to say the most memorable part of this experience was just seeing the car on the road, a car that we all helped build. Uh, mine's kind of the same. Uh, a lot of us have a lot of us have put a lot of hours into this, so seeing it cross the finish line is probably the most memorable experience. You didn't get stopped by the cross. Oh, that's it. Oh, you did. Yeah, probably my mo most memorable experience would be getting stopped by the uh, the police officer, Ohio State Trooper. Right. Yeah, that was uh, really interesting, and that and uh, getting to help the other teams that had uh, trouble. Uh, most of my work was on the solar cells. I would uh, help some people with the little minor things on the body or all something while they're working on the electronic spots. Most interesting part of the race for me was really the whole thing just after seeing having so many setbacks and seeing so many things go wrong actually being able to cross this finish line right over here. And you were not trailer, No, we weren't. And uh, I guess one of my most memorable experiences probably this trip was uh, breaking down uh, in Middleton, uh, Wisconsin and uh, we stopped by and happened to pull into a Krispy Kreme Donuts uh, and, and uh, we asked them if we could put hats on and they said we'll give you a 12 We'll give you uh, two dozen donuts for free if you wear hats and take a picture. So we're really thankful they gave us some donuts when we broke down. Pulling in here, for sure. I mean, this was awesome. Uh, we came in, we had an awesome day coming in. Um, we were able to go very fast. Um, and then coming in and the hometown was awesome. So many people were waiting, rooting for yeah. you guys. Yeah, uh, I, I think a lot of the uh, team members' family was here. Um, and a lot of friends were here, too. Uh, we were planning on doing, like, uh, about 40 to 45 all day and uh, once we got out in the rain uh, we brought it up to about 55 uh, and at some point we hit 60 so do you have any restriction on the speed or limit or on the speed 
Yeah, we're required to go the speed limit, um, and we have an overall limit of 65 miles an hour. Um, so we were on the interstate at one point today, where the speed limit was 70, but we could only go 65. You didn't get stopped by the police or anything. <laughs> it was no. It was a very unusual looking car. Yeah, uh, some teams do. Uh, Illinois got stopped this time um, uh, for not having the license plate displayed. <laughs> um, the cars don't have license plates on the outside, uh, so. But I think uh, I think earlier today was the most memorable when we um, we hydroplaned a little bit and uh, left the road. That uh, I mean we had some memorable moments, but that one will uh, it's a, it'll stick with you in a different way. Well, have you, so you haven't had experience uh, hydroplaning in the past, or you haven't test drive? Yep, we've never really left the road. We've never we were we were on the grass. That probably was the reason you uh, took a little bit more time this time. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that's exactly why. We were uh, we had a pretty quick set speed. We had set ourselves up perfectly for today to uh, go fast, but um, the rain kind of got to us and uh, got to us in a lot of ways. Yes, yeah, so you guys all came in uh, first for quite a few stages, right? Yeah, we we won every stage. Yep. Um, this one, I we, guess. Yeah, we had uh, I think an 11 hour lead at the start of this stage um, that just kind of built up over the previous stages. We generally got like two or three hours on the other teams at each stage. We actually have the, uh, the spin out on camera, so we're going to take a look at that and uh, that'll be interesting. This will be good for uh, as we build the next project because we're already, tomorrow I'll be starting to look at the next project. So this will be uh, something to start with, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show that we could build a car that's lighter than any car in this field, get an 11 hour lead, then, you know, spin off the road, get back on in an hour and go. You know, it's, it's, an, it was, it's an amazing vehicle, and, and the team who built it deserves all the credit. We ripped off one skid plate and we broke one handle on the inside that took a few minutes to super glue, and then we were back on the road. So, it well, actually is quite incredible. Feet, quite an incredible. <laughs> Just crossing the finish line right now. Felt good. We've been through a lot. We uh, we ran into some issues here and there. We we've, we've been hauling back basically with this car. What kind of issues? All sorts of issues. All sorts of issues. You know, one thing leads to another. I could stand here and ramble at you for hours. We've had mechanical issues, front end issues. We had uh, how many battery issues. Uh, what was, what was but this is a learning experience. So, how many uh, how many years have you guys participated in the American Solar Challenge? This is only our second American Solar Challenge. We had major front end issues, and um, it actually cost us a lot of time at Monticello. We had to end up we had to cut the whole body. We had there's actually four by four pieces of wood in there right now. You know, not obviously not the best material to use, but it's in there because we had to turn the whole whole turning radius was off. We had major issues. Uh, getting the frame to us on time. So we only actually built this car. We had the frame, we got the frame two days before the Monticello scrutineering event and the race, the track race and all that. So it was but good. at least you made it. Some oh, schools yeah. I heard uh, couldn't uh, make yeah. it because they didn't have enough time to finish yeah. building the car. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The 95 out of, I think, 100 laps, we uh, fell a couple laps short, but they gave us a special stipulation. Mm -hmm. And um, we ended up making it from Rochester to Erie in the appropriate timeline so they let us into the race. We actually, the first day of the race, we weren't even officially in. Our back's kind of been up against the wall the whole time, you know, and uh, but we finally got in, just running it. The other day, actually blew a shock out, coming over railroad tracks, blew a shock. We had to fix it in the parking lot. We had just two straight pieces of metal on there, no suspension whatsoever. Next day, we actually switched it out. Uh, we were lucky enough, Western Michigan, Maddie, Maddie at Western Michigan, thank you again. That was awesome. She helped us out so much. She, uh, we, we needed a whole new shop, and they, uh, they actually, it was at that checkpoint when the checkpoint went through Michigan there. And they, they let us in. Really nice facilities. But since we fixed it, it was the right shot that it went. We fixed it. We didn't really have too much time though to, uh, to balance everything out, you know. So of course, the very next day, the right side, we actually blew the piece of metal to actually hold the shock on the other side. It snapped right off of the weld broke right off so then we had to go two days ago we had to take the whole entire day in Illinois and um we only made it five miles that day. We only made it five miles. We were in like ninth place. We were, we were right with a lot of teams but that day was a shot. We uh I think a lot of teams at that point probably would have just packed it up and gone home. But we your didn't. team did no good. no we persevered we found this guy Stan Stan in Illinois, that was awesome dude. We have a lot of people to thank really, that could go on and on. A lot of people help us out, all these different teams. Very good. 
work and it was great. All the teams were great. They all worked together. Everybody came together to help us out. It's a very funny race, right? It's not a cut throw type yeah, of like. It's like a competition, you know, when it comes down to it. But really, everybody's on the same team. Yes, we're all here for the solar energy. It's awesome. Thank you. We wanted to be able to see solar energy spread across the planet much more quickly, right? Yeah, it should. It really should, you know, but. You're going to find people in the solar industry are very enthusiastic and very optimistic. So, well, they should be. Yes, the cost is going down, and uh, check out the sun is featured on that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Out. I got those cards. I'm going to go uh, give them to the guys. We'll Great. Check. Uh, we started in 1985. So. I think we've seen your car last year in Australia for the World Solar Challenge 2011 also. And you mentioned there's a change in the regulation. Is it just on uh, the square footage, the uh, uh, solar cells? Um, no, the square footage is the same. It's things like our uh, chassis, the different roll bars that have for safety. Um, pretty much ASC is more concerned about safety than WSC is. So there's a lot of things we had to change that make that made our car more difficult. And yeah, because we didn't design for those, we built it. It's been a challenge. What did you have to change? Um, for instance, you can't see it, but our, uh, we had added a second roll bar. Um, we had to change the brakes we were using, which have caused us a lot of difficulties. Um, we've had to just a lot of other small things. Um, we also redesigned our suspension system at the same time to work with Michelin tires. So it's another just change to, from our original design. That let's see, one mine, one. Light. One light, infinite, infinite rays. rays. Oh, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah, we're from a small college, uh, Principia College. It's uh, just outside of St. Louis in Illinois. We're a school of 550 students uh, and no engineering program, which is kind of a big surprise for uh, most of the competitors competitors in this race. We're a school that focuses on uh, two main goals, to glorify God and to do our best. And so long as we're accomplishing those goals, uh, we're winners in our hearts. We've actually finished overall in the race in third place, which is really a fantastic accomplishment for us. Uh, the Principia program's been active since 1991, and we've competed all over the world. We've competed several times in Australia, in Taiwan, in China, and in Greece, uh, and many times in the U.S. In the first day of racing, we actually had to uh, do a motor change, which usually takes about an hour, and uh, we were fortunate enough to have practiced that several times uh, prior to the race, and we were actually able to accomplish it in about 35 minutes, which was record timing for us. Practice makes perfect, doesn't it? That's right, absolutely, especially when you never know when you're going to need to do it. It was really fortunate that we had practiced that. Have any supporting vehicle coming along with you? Absolutely. Uh, in a solar car race, generally speaking, you have five vehicles. Uh, you have a scout vehicle, which is usually half an hour to an hour ahead of the solar caravan, and they're uh, spotting the road, you know, looking for weather conditions, looking for hard road conditions, so they can warn us prior. And then directly in front of the solar car, we have our lead vehicle, and directly behind it, we have our chase vehicle, and those two protect the solar car, because we're on the highway and on roads with all traffic. I mean, you've got 18 wheelers, you've got, you know, regular motorists uh, driving down the road, and so it's important for an uh, experimental vehicle like solar cars to have that protection, and so those two protect the solar car, and if there's ever a need to stop and work on something, uh, the whole team is kept in those two vehicles so that they can jump out and you know do tire changes or whatever the need is at that time and then lastly we have a box car or a trailer uh, that we drive along and if there's ever a need for a team to uh, trailer their solar car or if there's ever a need to uh, get you know extra supplies that can't fit in lead and chase vehicles that's that's usually about half an hour behind us great deal cooperative effort here uh, what about well our car uh, the motor that we use on our car is rated up to about 90 miles an hour we have driven a previous uh, car up to 85 miles an hour on this race we had to obey all speed limits and it's best for us to actually uh, maintain a lower average uh, rather than you know going 65 70 if you you maintain around uh, 45 to 50 you'll get the best uh, energy usage and so we, we maintain maintained about 45 to 50 made it up to uh, I, I think 50 was our max very good. This is uh, spoken by the very experienced uh, driving team, Principia, here. And uh, we're really glad to be able to get hold of you for a few minutes. Josh Curry. Yes. And have a wonderful day. Thank you so and much. Take care. Bye bye. bye, bye. Signing off, Susan Sun Nanamaker with SunIsTheFuture.net here at the Capitol, in front of the Capitol building of the uh, state of Minnesota. Good day.